Hello and welcome to another video on Wartech. I'm Miney, this is Kaltenstein, and this happens when you have too much free time. Yeah, welcome to this uh, English video on the channel. We did one before. It's linked in the description, I think. Um, but I think we're just going to assume that you know nothing about us um, and watching this is our first video. Um, yeah, we usually do German content, as you can see. But uh, for our bigger projects, we sometimes decide to do them in English as well. And I think this qualifies as a bigger project. Okay, um, so what are we looking at, Miney? Well, this is a Mega Wargear. Um, well, what is a Wargear? It is basically a contraption with TNT cannons uh, firing at something and a bunch of redstone tech. And uh, yeah, I think Mega is uh, self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, if you want to know more about the subject um, and don't speak German, um, our good friend Halem has done an uh, I think an hour long video, um, full English introduction into the topic. It's basically a Minecraft game mode uh, where people build these uh, these fighting machines and fight against each other on servers. Or like us, build these massive things that are not really useful for anything, but kind of are cool to look at or something, I don't know. So go and check uh, it out. This video is linked in the description and also here on the map. Um, okay, you can download this map on Planet Minecraft. It's also linked in the description below. Um, yeah, and you can find uh, a full, I think, 40-page uh, PDF document explaining everything also on Planet Minecraft and linked in this little booklet here. So mine is going to read out some yeah. uh, technical uh, specifications uh, while I can show you some outside renders we did. Well, it's uh, 371 blocks long with the barrel, to, uh, 286 without. Uh, well, it's um, 143 blocks wide and uh, it's uh, 99 blocks high without the antenna and uh, 149 with. Yeah, it has 14 uh, 220 projectile uh, step cannons, 8 uh, 56 projectile ripple cannons, uh, I don't like the English name, and it of course has a main gun behind a big barrel, uh, and this has uh, 1,120 projectiles. Yeah. It has 106 sensors for damage, and uh, well, the rest we will see when we go inside. Absolutely. Um, one more thing, uh, we have this uh, test block here, um, designed to yeah, take the fire and uh, see what the cannons can do. It is basically tradition that a warrior is placed 50 blocks uh, away from the from the block, so this distance is 50 blocks now. Since it looks a bit stupid to have it so close to the um, to the block, I think the barrel gives it uh, kind of a more sleek appearance, so I kind of like it. If you look at our older Mega Wargears, um, they kind of look a bit goofy when they are placed right next to the block. Um, yeah, but um, if you want to shoot at something, place it 50 blocks away from the first blocks, otherwise the cannons won't work. It's, yeah, it's just the nature of them. And of course, it's TNT, so it will only penetrate through a maximum of end stone. Everything with a higher blast resistance can't be destroyed with vanilla TNT. So yeah, this block is made out of, made out of end stone. So if you spawn on the map, uh, you're first confronted with this uh, bunch of levers and buttons here. Um, this one is very important to force load the war gear. There are a bunch of command blocks behind it that um, force load all the relevant chunks in the war gear. Otherwise, when you flip a switch on the bridge of the war gear, certain functions might not work and might not respond correctly. Also, there are certain clocks that have to be running and systems that constantly update. So force loading is really, uh, really crucial for the thing to work correctly. Also, we are on version uh, 1.19.4. We've got some bug reports that certain things don't work in later versions. Um, so don't even. Try Try it. We like, won't fix something which is broken in another version. Yeah. So if, if you want the full experience, just use 1.19. dot everything really. Nah, um, point four. Yeah. Okay. Um, we also got allies uh, for some item sorting systems. You can generate new ones with this button here. Um, that also disposes of the old ones if they're still there. Um, it's a failsafe. It, they should be there when you download the world, but to be safe, just press the button. Um, we also press the force load button. Our YouTube channel is linked here, but you already found it, so there's that. Our Planet Minecraft page, as I said, is also linked in the description. And our community Discord server, we do have an English channel, so feel free to join it. And if you press all those buttons, the gate opens up, but because we're in the English version, we've got some extra stuff, um, which is the full English introduction into the topic made by Halem, as we said, linked in the description, and localization. 
So, this map is available both in German and in English. Of course, as we are German, we built the original version in German and then converted it uh, into English. We translated uh, all of the relevant signs. Uh, what we didn't translate... Not just the relevant ones. Basically, everyone. Everything. Every sign so. in... You can actually see there are some debug signs in the... Um, in inside the technical um, spaces, but I we... forgot this. Yes, yes, yes. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <coughs> anyway, um, what we didn't uh, translate were all the items because um, we were sure to miss some, and the item systems would be quite a hassle to translate. Um, that's why I've got a quick explainer here. Uh, we've got three kinds of key cards in the war game. We'll get to that later. The NM Civil Karte, Crew Karte, and Commando Karte. I think you can kind of guess what they mean. Um, this is a civilian level key card. You can have access to the civilian areas and nothing else. The crew key card um, you have access to basically everywhere, but uh, you need the command key card for certain areas. Um, that's basically it. Uh, more for certain functions. Yeah, true, not areas functions. Yeah, but we'll get to that when we're on the bridge. Yeah, I think that's it for this area. We can uh, skip those pressure plates for now and look at the distribution of blocks. These are the top 10 blocks we. Um, we used in the war gear. If you don't know how, you can just uh, select an area, put it, and do this command um, slash slash distra for distribution. And uh, well, you of course uh, have to use world edit or uh, fast as awesome world edit for that. <laughs> um, okay, you get endstone, which is of course the armor used, uh, excluding air. This is the most uh, used block in the war gear. Um, as Miney said, it is the highest uh, blast resistant that still can be destroyed with TNT. Um, in the new system, I say new system, it's been in place for a few years, but uh, it has a blast resistance of 9. And it's base, uh, basically used as a building block everywhere to um, yeah, higher the blast resistance of the war gear. Redstone is just redstone. Um, we've got 80,286 uh, dusts of redstone, which is uh, pretty cool, I think. Um, yeah, then a bunch of design stuff. Gravel, uh, we use that for sensors, so if you um, imagine a gravel tower, that has a redstone line on top, and then uh, you break one of them, the redstone also will break on top, and the sensor will register as damaged. Yeah, basically like that. And if you put an alarm here, it still say, oh, got damaged to the sensor. So this is why gravel is so, um, there's so much gravel in the war gear. Some more design well, blocks. not the exact way it works in that war gear, it's a bit more complicated, but this is how you can build sensors in general. Uh, then we've got smooth stone slabs, which are um, used also as armor, um, if you have um, redstone lines going up um, going up like this. Placing a slab there um, will ensure that when you're armoring the war gear, you won't accidentally place a block of handstone here, uh, disconnecting the two redstone lines. So um, this is mainly used for that, as well as design. And some more um, design blocks and used yeah. in the um, wiring, yeah, okay. Technically, endstone brick slabs would have uh, also have a uh, higher blast resistance, but well, we are old and they didn't have a higher blast resistance uh, forever. This got changed in, I think, 1.15. In earlier versions, uh, endstone bricks had a, a blast resistance that was way, way lower. That's everything here, I think, so we can just... Hey, yeet. <laughs> I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, get a speed effect here and run to the entrance, which is at the back, of course. Um, and we get here. You can see my FT uh, FPS bar beginning to drop. I'm just gonna switch off night vision here real quick, um, which doesn't really make it better anyway. So let's go onto this elevator here um, and press the button. There are two stations for elevators. Um, one of them is always occupied unless you specifically uh, lock the elevators from the bridge. Um, and we are here, which is the yeah. um, lobby, and, the uh, first one. Yeah, you, you can see this door closed, so the other one is, uh, on is the way uh, now on the way down. Yeah. Okay, I have disabled my shader now because um, as these area especially are very. Um, heavy on performance impact, so if you have a weak PC, don't use a shader or reconsider downloading the war gear at all, because when we are <laughs> using... Yeah, when we're using uh, all the technology in the war gear, there will be even more performance impact. Also, if you're running on a server, um, please raise the max TNT per tick in the Spigot YML, um, otherwise yeah. the cannons won't work, and also you need a very performance server, so don't use an Aternos server or something like that. Um, yeah, we have a, a pretty extensive description of what your server should uh, should be able to do in the um, in the user manual. So please look at that if you want to put it on a server. Uh, and please credit us if you want to use it for something else. So 
pretty self-explanatory, I think. Okay, so where are we? This is the uh, the first lobby, which is just for this thing, which is the code lock. Um, it's a sequential code lock that can be reprogrammed and has three different codes. And if there's a localization error here, we'll fix that in the download, hopefully. So how does it work? We want uh, a keycard to access all the other doors in the war game. So what we'll do now is look at what keycard we want to get. I think let's get the, um, the highest level one, which is... Uh, Command card, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. You can also reset the input if you made a mistake. Um, but if you look at here, the input was correct. Ah. The door opened, and now we can wait for the key card, which is now requested. Um, there is a limited storage mm -hmm. of these uh, in the back, so we've got <laughs> our card now. There is still enough time to go through, but I think yeah, we'll just let it close and. Um, Look at All this. the rest. <laughs> yeah, because if you already have a key card, you can just use this card reader here. Yeah, which opens the door. Also, um, there is this intruder alert here, um, which is armed uh, when the door is closed. Also, the intruder alert can be triggered um, if there if you use the wrong key card three times. Is that correct? I think so. Okay, but uh, anyway, you can uh, reset that from the bridge. Uh, both of those. Uh, we'll take a look at that. It's, it's been some time since we built it, so please uh, yeah. forgive us if we don't remember every feature, but we're trying to explain everything now. Yeah. On the other side, we've got the same thing again, really. A keycard reader and a bunch of status lights uh, for different settings for the store. You can change uh, some modes of the door. At the moment, you can just open it with a button press. Which is this one here, and the door opens. Yeah. Uh, as you can <laughs> see, the intruder alert yeah. is disarmed. Yeah. Then you have um, you have a mode where you uh, need your keycard to open it, mm -hmm. and you have another mode where the, the keycard will be retained and fed back into the uh, storage system. So, um, for example, if you want that no one can leave the war gear uh, with, with their card and um, yeah have to pull a new new one at the front, you activate this one. And also we have uh, this. You can uh, basically lock the whole walkie down and uh, you need a commando card to get out. Yes, exactly. Uh, but we got it luckily. Really every... Ah, and, uh, and you can, uh, you can uh, open the door permanently from, from the bridge. Close the door. No, open the door permanently. Oh yeah, locked open, sorry. Okay, okay, never mind. <coughs> um, yeah, this one also um, locks this one open, uh, which is the security door. Um, it can't be open at the same time as the main gate, so... Um, once you open that, this one will be automatically closed. Yeah, and we're in the second lobby. <laughs> there are a few more to come. Um, we, there's also an intruder alert trigger here. Um, if you see some bad actors going through that door, you can press this button at the other bridge. Yeah. Um, but, uh, this uh, place is reserved. Who is that? Well, um, you have no, uh, you have to have no life and be German to understand that. Yeah, there are a bunch of uh, stupid cultural references nobody's gonna get because they're not as crazy as we are. Um, yeah, but uh, let's take a look. We um, we've got two elevators here. Um, we've got stairwell, but we're not gonna use it because we're lazy. Um, do not use the fire in case of elevator. Exactly. And we've got this thing, which is the quality assurance, the QA. Um, it's basically. Um, Everything that has to do with uh, building and crafting and storage systems. Um, there's a keycard reader to it, um, but you can just leave it without a keycard because why wouldn't you? I don't know. And there was no space left. <laughs> yeah, and you greet it with this, no, which is uh, which is a storage system. Um, not your usual one, actually. If we take a look in the um, in the wiring, you can see. Um, it's a bit different, um, and if you take a look in the item hoppers, there are uh, stacked chalker boxes here. Um, basically, this setup allows you um, to generate a 14 signal strength signal with just one of the sortable item here, and you can put a, a whole stack of that here, and it will be uh, it will get sorted uh, without the signal spilling over into the next one. And the way uh, you make this compact is you place um, anything, a container that can be read by a comparator behind this redstone line. The comparator will read this empty container and therefore have no signal unless the signal strength on top is 15. 
Um, so if you didn't know that, that's a way you can build really compact storage systems that don't spill over. So if you had a conventional one with, uh, with redstone here and um, just filler items here, and you'd place a whole stack of disruptible item in there, it would spill over into the next one and uh, begin emptying the, uh, the hopper on top. So I think this is a really uh, elegant solution to handle larger um, influx of items than a usual system. And you see those ominous floor panels. Um... We've got a bunch of crafting stations here and also press the second button. Um, Brick mixers? Yeah, so basically what you do is uh, you get a pickaxe and a bunch of um, concrete powder. You place the concrete powder into the dropper and um, basically spam right click and hold down left click at the same time um, to place it on this observer, the observer will trigger and dispense another um, dispense another uh, block of concrete powder. So you can basically go on indefinitely and uh, AFK farm concrete. Mm. Okay. And also and we have uh, the input for a sorter. So if you put anything in here, it will get automatically sorted into the system. You can also uh, put shulker boxes there. They will be... Um, Yes, they will be emptied automatically and uh, will get sorted into the unsortable item chests. <laughs> um, also, don't worry about this. Uh, it's not an empty spot, it's just my resource pack acting up because the ladder has a strange model and it's not really working when you place it in an item frame. Um, okay. And uh, finally, we got a bamboo farm. Um, don't worry about the lights being switched out, it just means that the storage is full. Um, the farm will automatically switch off if the storage is full and if you want to know an elegant way of switching off the bamboo farm you can just turn off the lights and place a tinted glass or any other non-light uh, transparent block in front. And uh, it also is connected to an automatic furnace so you can place food or uh, ores or anything else uh, which you can put into an oven into this input and uh, get an output here. Yeah, It's also pretty quick so we've, I think we got like 12 ovens um, working in sync. Okay, um, there's also a bit more to the QA, um, which is uh, kind of in the backs of the uh, of the tech rooms, but uh, we're gonna get to that later when we're in the combat decks. Did you place anything? Yeah. Oh yes. Ah, there it is. <coughs> okay, it will take some time, of course, for the first uh, bunch of stuff to get smelted. So we've got 14, so there are 14 ovens there that are working constantly, and now it's going pretty quick. Yeah, we're 28 now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so it's... for max efficiency, just put uh, in uh, as much as you have at the same time because it really, uh, really takes time before everything is at the furnaces. And you see now the bamboo is growing. The bamboo farm is activated um, because the lights are turned on and uh, yeah, we'll just automatically generate um, the fuel for the furnaces. All right, uh, so let's get out of here and uh, carry on because we've got a bunch more wargy to deal with. Um, I think starting with the elevator, which is... Uh, with or without cool. Jossie? Yes, uh, we like Jesse. He's our good friend and um, he's our lift boy in this war gear. And let's just uh, go to deck two. We're on deck one right now, um, as you can see with the oh. signs. Yeah, the elevator is pretty self-explanatory. You can just uh, press the uh, call button to get it to your uh, to your level, and yeah, you can uh, you can press the button where you want to go. Uh, it holds there. The door will actually close. It's not like those uh, cheap elevators where you can. Uh, <laughs> jump out uh, while it's uh, going up or down, so it's a fine design. It's courtesy of you, you know. Um, we're gonna make it try on that at some stage, um, at least he wants to. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, so we're now in the third lobby we've got. Um, this is our credit wall, so um, this is all the people who contributed. Um, the main four guys, um, Miney, myself, Yo Yo Now, and Korgamer, he pays for the server infrastructure and everything, so thank you to that. Um, and we also got a bunch of our team members and friends who helped um, with more little designs, or um, Yuya, for example, did a lot of work with the cannons, and uh, Razor built some as well. Great! Uh, um, oh yeah, this is the center point of the Borgir, not vertically, but uh, laterally. Um, so yeah, the vertical we're... one is around here uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. We might be pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, this should be one of the most safe 
place in the war gear, so if you're under fire, go here, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably not, but well, anyway, this is the center point. Yeah. Um, really, every, there's nothing much else to this area. There is access to the lower level of the cannons here, uh, which is just um, layout uh, front here. Can we go mm. there or I've, later? I think... I don't remember which way we did it last time. Yeah, let's just go there. Um, also yeah, you can this... wait for the interesting part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, also this bulkhead here can be closed um, uh, or locked from the bridge, which uh, only grants access to those with this command card. Um, yeah, and we're at the first cannon level now. These are the um, 22, 200, sorry, 220. Uh, projectile stab cannons might be mentioned. Um, they have uh, three elevation modes, uh, so you can hit basically straight and um, two levels below that. Um, the cannons have to be we enabled. Lost the letter. Sorry? We lost the letter. Where? Without? Oh, yeah, there's a team missing. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, the cannon has to be enabled um, by a lever on the bridge. By default, it is enabled, so you don't uh, wonder why the cannon isn't working. Um, it also can be fired, and the mode can be switched from the bridge, but all of that can be done here too. Basically, if you want to download the map and just uh, look at the cannon, you can just go up here and press the fire button. Yes. Um, there are five uh, on this level and five on the level above, and there are four more on the top. Um... Yeah, and when we go here, um, this is the... Um, Sorry. Also, it can uh, hit on three different heights. You can switch here. I mentioned that, yes. Ah, okay. Then I ignored that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if you look at this, uh, this is what I just said about the QA. This is basically the extended arm of the QA. Um, we can um, take this construction materials. When you um, think a chest is boring. Yeah, normal walkers would just have a, a chest with TNT and maybe some um, some redstone items. Uh, what we did is this. Um, you can take any item from here and either empty the shulker box or completely break it. It gets sucked up automatically and gets replaced by this one. Um, the full ch uh, shulker box now gets transported back to the QA. It gets emptied um, back into the storage. The shulker box itself gets sorted out by allies, that's why they're so important, and uh, gets reintroduced into the system. It is refilled with the items in this order. Um, there is a special filling system for that, uh, if you want to take a look at that, that um, generates this exact order of items. Um, same for the and some of the TNT chests. Um, yeah, let's get placed back into the buffer of these stations. There are three loops in the war gear, one for each kind of uh, shulker box. And basically, if there is an empty spot in one of these stations, uh, it gets sucked up. So there is an exact amount of uh, shulker boxes that are in circulation, basically, um, so that everything that is uh, broken here will be replaced. Um, there's also this uh, recycling bin. Miney just threw a bunch of stuff in it, so it also gets reintroduced into the um, into the sorting system and gets uh, placed into the storage. Okay. Ooh, um, yeah. um, let's continue. Bunch of corridors, which are hard to navigate, I guess. This uh, this ladder here leads to um, the roof exit. We can just take a quick look at that because we're not gonna get here again. It's basically just a Let's secret stairwell. Hmm? Please don't break it this time. Uh, I think we fixed that. Um, yeah, things always break when you're trying to show them off, although you tested everything, really. It's, it's so annoying. Um, yeah, it's no, not really... This was an active process of breaking it last time. <laughs> well, it's not really it that interesting. not the fault of the... Yeah. And Excellent. also, yeah, let's just go here real quick, which is the lowermost... Um, also, there's Potter's Snow below here, so you can just jump down. Uh, the lowermost uh, cannon deck, uh, which has the lower four uh, ripple cannons built by Razor. Um, you can adjust their projectile delay up here. Just follow the instructions, I guess. Yeah. So uh, you can kill the cannon, of course, with that, so please be careful. <laughs> I think there are 56 projectile weapons. Yeah, I don't that's right. Them. Four of them here, and uh, four of them on the deck, one higher. 
Yes, uh, and there is also this, which is the dif dispenser refill. There are flamethrowers in the war gear, um, two batteries on each side. You can refill them here. Um, they are automatically detected if they're empty and give an alert on the bridge, so you know when to come here. And the clocks also stop working when they're empty, so they don't produce unnecessary lag. Um, let's just go back up. There is another deck of ripple cannons here, as we said. Um, it's really the same. Same in really. green, as we would say. Same in green, well, it's all in blue and gray and everything, I don't know. And, uh, well, we can go basically back on the um, same side. It's all symmetrical here. Um, not everywhere, but at least it is here. Um, got another item kiosk. And... Uh, cannons yeah, again. Step cannons, all right. Ah, uh, sometimes you will get strings with uh, with those uh, keycard systems. Uh, these are just cobwebs that get destroyed. It's not really important. Just throw them away. Nothing is broken when you get them. <laughs> yeah, I just called for the lift. Um, so we can use this one and use this function. It also gets a little chime when the door opens and the lift arrives. Um, and we can go to the third deck now. Um, you may also notice we have got uh, glass walls in the elevator and um, the rest is wooden, well, fake wood or something. <laughs> it looks like in a peak 60s. <laughs> yeah, peak 60s uh, German office, I don't know. <laughs> well, this was the style we were going for, um, completely fitting the rest of the wall, of course. Um, yeah, you've got a little pieces of art here in air quotes uh, the inventor of war gears mr creative he fell um semi-famous german youtuber been inactive so for modern day uh, yeah so modern day war gears of course people also figured out beforehand that you could place tnt cannons in a little row and put something about around them so like uh, modern day war gears with uh, tech and how to standardize the rule sets and so on this was done by him and yeah. his brother. Um. <laughs> <laughs> really by his brother, uh, it was done first, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, um, okay. On the lower deck, you have uh, quasi-connectivity there. Which is the most um, most important feature of Minecraft, okay. Um, yeah, and we're here now, which is uh, the next lobby. I have stopped counting. I think it's the fourth. And um, yeah, we've got a bunch of options here. I think we'll just go to the bridge first. Um, sure. So, when you go down this corridor, first you've got some little windows into uh, some more of the inner world things. And this, uh, which is the entry to the bridge, which is also only possible with a crew card. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the Windows XP startup sound in the background. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's a counter, so um, that if everyone with a crew or a commando card left uh, the bridge, it uh, will shut down again. Yeah, and we're here in the bridge now, and um, you can see this uh, display here. Um, if you've got a shader activated and uh, don't have any night vision, um, you basically don't see the um, lamps or switch off. So it kind of looks like it's a whole display, but it's really just a bunch of status lights uh, arranged really neatly. Um, ergonomics was a real important factor uh, when designing this bridge, so um, we were aiming to provide an overview for a single um, commander for the whole bridge and then uh, make it controllable by as little people as possible if you compare it to our older and more complex bridges. So we've got this timer here. Um, it is a 24 hour clock. You can um, adjust right here. Right now it is 13, 37, well, 38, whatever. Um, there is Double a will lag enough that it uh, will go right again. Yeah, so if you got uh, 20 TPS exactly, it will um, stay in real time. But of course, if you generate lag or unload this uh, this chunk or anything, um, the time will basically stop. Um, also, um, this timer has uh, two other modes. One is the shot counter, if you can just um, switch no, to display mode. The other one comes first, I think. So. Okay, yeah, operating time. We're at one minute right now. Um, we reset this uh, when we made the download world and we just uh, entered the bridge, which activated all the systems. So we're at one minute of operating time right now. If we're done, it will probably get uh, a bit higher than that. 
And also there's the shot counter, it's at 0, 0, 0, 0 right now, so you can shoot 9999 times before it loops over. Um, and basically every time you trigger a TNT cannon, the shot um, counter will count up by 1. Okay, um, in other things we've got uh, these status lamps here, which are the real... So the, the size of them really corresponds to the importance. So we've got the flamethrower dispensers, headlights, dispensers empty, the bridge lights, which is basically self-explanatory, yeah. uh, the lookout The bridge status. lights are really nice because they don't destroy your roof anymore. Zeigen wir gleich. Oh, fuck, Alter. <laughs> Was? Yeah, if you watch the German Let's Show, um, we triggered the bridge lights and it uh, triggered part of the self-destruct sequence. Yeah, not really good. Our light exploded. Yes. Um, light in the combat decks is also displayed here, and um, light in the civilian areas. And also the lookout status, which is lookout disabled, which is the default, so the walking looks a bit more tidy outside. And if you're in the lookout, you can um, select enemy spotted, which will display it here. The way this works yeah. is um, you take a look at the signs here, and basically um, they're mapped onto the, onto the display. So if you look here, the um, third one in the lower column exactly this one. And all those lamps uh, down here are just decorative. Except just not at the clock. Yes, because there are no there was no space left on the display to include the status. So this is actually a status lamp which is uh, distinguished by also being um, in this block level and not just below. Uh, but these ones are just uh, lighting for the uh, for displays. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so I think you can figure out why it's sorted this way. Um, now the alerts or alarms, or whatever. I think we actually have uh, both uh, ways to write it mixed up here somewhere. Intruder detected, we already saw that uh, at the entrance. Evacuation initiated, uh, yeah, you have a button right here that opens all doors and um, also activates an alarm, so you can know you have to get the fuck out of the war game. Um, yeah, there also is uh, critical damage, which is a sensor right in front of this display, basically. So um, if the damage has reached this far into the wall, you should really get the hell out of the bridge. And there is uh, self-destruction, um, self-explanatory. If you activate the self-destruct sequence over there, um, this alarm will be triggered. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this long bar here is the countdown bar for the self-destruct, we'll get to that at the end. Um, and also the generic uh, damage detected alert. Uh, which is this block right here. It's triggered by a bunch of different sensors. We'll get to that, I think. Um, yeah. This is also relevant for the sensors because they don't just um, register the instant they're destroyed, but they're sampled. So the system um, in this specified amount of time, which is right now every five minutes, the system will send out um, a pulse through the sensor system and um, measure the return pulse it gets. And if there are missing pulses in there, it will know um, that damage uh, has occurred to the sensors. If that happens, yeah, mine is just uh, building that right now. This won't work. Um, yeah, <laughs> this will work. Um, yeah, it's basically just uh, this. Yeah, so we get a blinking sequence here, which will be decoded by a binary decoder, basically. And uh, if you destroy any one of these repeaters in the middle, which represents a sensor... Um. Yeah. <laughs> you can see there is a blink missing right there. The system will detect that um, and display it uh, right here. Um, if you take a look at these, all of these boxes represent uh, a single cannon. Um, one of the stab cannons, to be precise. And um, this area right here, which is uh, slightly lighter colored, um, does display the damage to the cannon or in front of the cannon. So if you would just trigger some damage. Yeah. So if the sampling rate is too slow for you and you want some information now, you can just press this, which is sample sensors. And I what we'll do... The sampling rate higher. Yeah. Um, which can be done here with these switches. Or automatically if uh, damage is detected, we will see it now, there. Yes, we've got a damage alert. So we'll trigger this uh, audio warning, um, the lamp will illuminate. Now, if you look at the screen, um, this bar has started um, intermittently going off, which um, indicates that there's damage in this sector here. And if you look, some colored blocks have been put here. <laughs> and if you see them, you can look here, which is uh, basically the legend for um, all the color codes. 
So it says there is minimal damage and light damage detected to the sector here. So this is how yeah. you read the system. Also, the color code should be pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Spoiler: so, red is bad. Um, uh, basically, red damage means the damage has reached the um, the wiring of the cannon. Heavy damage is basically there are only a few more blocks of uh, armor left, and so on and so on. And minimal damage is basically five blocks behind the the front of the warrior, I think. Um, so it, it really differs because the armor uh, has different thicknesses um, all around, but it's, yeah, it just gives we, you a ballpark of uh, yeah. how heavy the damage is. All right. And we, we really had to work around this design, be it the uh, slope front or even worse, the upper part is uh, basically connected just to, through this ring. Everything had to go through there and this really was fun. If you look at the real tank, you've got of course a turret basket uh, rotating in this inner ring. And uh, the size of the ring really constricted uh, the way we had to build it. So there's a bunch of cables and there's um, the elevators, there are stairwells, there is this huge lobby opening and there was really no space left at all. Mm. Yeah, I muted the alarm. Yes, which can be done with this button here. Also, um, what we can do is take a look at this. Uh, this is the vigilance level and um, it is in some way connected to the sampling rate. Basically, when um, damage is detected, the vigilance rate is automatically set to general quarters, which is the highest one. Um, that, in turn, will automatically increase the sampling rate to its maximum. They're not the same, so you can lower them independently of each other, which can be done here. So if you decrease the sampling rate, um, it will go back to two minutes and do it again, yeah. and it will go back it to will five. Just, uh, it will just automatically be set up to, uh, to the highest level. Exactly. If this reaches the highest level. Uh, well, this will be done from sensors or manually. Um, also, the vigilance uh, uh, is um, dictating in which, uh, in which um, distance the black box will be reset and so on and filled and whatnot. Uh, we will go there later, I think. Yeah, also the vigilance level on general quarters, it will open all the um, all the doors which are related to the um, to the combat legs. So if you take a look at this corner right here, we can see the status of all the doors in the war And as you can see, the combat decks uh, doors is open. Also the civilian area and QA doors have been opened um, to allow more easy access. Of course, uh, this Wargy has uh, more or less a roleplay concept. So you uh, have all those doors open so uh, people who are staying in their quarters can go to the cannons when they are needed with that. Mm. Without uh, opening the doors, for example, if there are like uh, 50 people, this would really be a hassle to open always the doors and get the keycard back to the uh, to the right person. So this is just easier for that yeah. and faster. Um, the next thing we've got here is the lifts. Um, lift, elevator, whatever. We're German, we don't care. Also, um, right. Aufzug. <laughs> yes, <laughs> whatever. Uh, oh, <laughs> there's a another localization error right here. Okay. Um, Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, for position auf zu left. There, there are some localization um, errors. Uh, please excuse that. So I can understand how some things happen, but um, basically it was uh, we had a plugin this uh, that uh, knew all signs in Warrior, and you basically translated one of them, and all identical signs were replaced, and you got teleported to the next one, and so on. So I can understand why um, some signs have the same errors and why some signs got ignored, but I really don't understand how it happened that half a sign is translated. <laughs> anyway, um, this display here indicates where the elevators are. So we've got the four decks right here and the lamps indicate where they are. As you can see, we took the uh, right elevator or the left if you look at this way, whatever. We took this one um, to go to the bridge and we left this one on deck two. So that works fine. Also, if all lamps are off, that means they're in motion right now. There was no real way to include uh, the moving elevator into that. So, well, whatever. Um, and uh, there is yeah, the self-destruction. Self uh, you could also whatever. disable the elevators. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, so next yeah. is the self-destruct panel. Um, we'll do that at the end, I think. Um, one more legend to um, use this place. And these are the... Um, the flank sensors, I don't know. Basically yeah. at the side of the warrior right uh, next to the skin. So if you get attacked from the side, um, these sensors will trigger. They're more conventional, so 
one redstone um, line. Basically, and one, the one we uh, built at the beginning. Yes, uh, and one tower of gravel um, will correspond yeah. to one of the slams lighting up. If one of them lights up, this alarm will trigger, and it will also trigger the general um, damage alert. Yeah, the upper ones are uh, up the, on the upper part of the wall, and these ones are in the uh, skirts at the at the trains. So tracks, um, it's not chains. Tracks, yeah. whatever. I don't <laughs> care. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, on the um, other side, we um, should probably fix the damage at the front because the server doesn't really like that. So. Uh, it is a TPS of 20, but uh, no, it is, yeah, it is a uh, TPS of 20, but uh, still this is it's putting a strain on server and we want to test other things and Whatever. we could minimize the lag so we don't kill the server afterwards. So let's also just um, decrease, decrease the vigil vigilance, English is a hard language level, um, and if we do the sampling right now again. As you can see, the damage will turn off in a few seconds because the signal, of course, has to go through quite a bit of repeaters um, and cover quite a bit of distance. And um, the main problem is uh, we need uh, quite um, interesting see. ways to uh, to lay cables because it is full here. It's really full. Yeah, the cramp conditions you in can... the front, um, especially going up through the ring, but also just um, into the front. Yeah, it it can just fly into there. Yeah, I can show you right now. So this is basically all the tech that is associated with the bridge. This one on the lower side is for the alarms, um, which have to be transported right here, right over the uh, lower lobby <laughs> without making contact into these systems, which uh, display the damage. Also, there are these uh, redstone lines associated with controlling the cannons that have to go the other way. Um, so basically, without uh, signal strength and coding and everything, it just wouldn't have been possible to fit everything here. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, uh, it doesn't get better at the front. At the front, of course, we have to uh, we have to sub uh, uh, somewhere go around the atrium. So. All functions that go to the front take a lot of time. Yeah. Also, some of them are uh, decoded, so they take even more time. Okay. Um, For example, if, if you uh, want to fire a cannon, you. Yeah, not. I was. Uh, eh, later, later, later. Then, then later. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you look at this uh, side here, we already mentioned it. It is the um, display timer. So um, you can change the display mode here, um, again to the clock mode. And uh, we are at 13.53, which is correct. Um, and we can change the display time here, we already set it, so just flit, uh, flick this lever and um, adjust the time with these uh, buttons here. You can also reset the operating time and reset the shot counter right here. Um, and then just uh, disable the set time switch and carry on. As you can see, um, we also got these blinking dots right here. Um, they blink once every second, uh, exactly. So um, if you know, redstone lamps take an extra tick uh, to disable. So the clock behind that uh, is a semi-stable circuit that uh, gets turned off quicker than it gets turned on. So the blinking is exactly uh, one second apart. And this panel here is basically the most relevant functions in the war gear. Um, we've got an indicator if it's uh, day or night. Um, we've got the headlights, light on the bridge, which we can just you know, quick test. The ceiling doesn't explode, which is a good sign. Um, yeah, we turned it off. Why should it explode now? It also didn't explode now. Very good. Um, the combat deck lighting, um, notice the change block at blah blah blah. Um, we've got a few command blocks in the war game. One is for replacing the allies, and two more are for we'll lighting. We'll them later. Yeah. This is one just run room, and uh, yeah, it just look better, and yeah. It doesn't really um, change anything. So if you want to be purist and do it without command blocks, you can remove that, I guess, and just don't have lights there or whatever. Um, there's also the civilian area, not civil area, whatever, it's just a localization area. Mm. Uh, er error. Ah! Error. Okay. 
you can disable the lookouts. Uh, it's enabled by default, so if you can just disable this one, it will enable the lookouts. Disable and whatever. Um, you can also um, disable the lifts at the entrance. They are the ones that took us into the war gear. Um, if you press this button and just fly down there real quick, you can see there will be a stream of water sent down, which will send up the other elevator. Um, this is the way they communicate with each other um, through this well here. And uh, once it is up there, these blast doors will close. Um, real neat, I think. And you will get an indication here that the lifts are disabled. And okay. those doors will only close um, when you uh, when you lock them from the bridge, uh, not uh, when one is just uh, in the upper deck, because this would be way too slow. Also, um, we can lock open the main gate and security door, which will basically create a, a throughway through the main gate, so you can just leave. It will also be triggered if you uh, trigger the uh, evacuation to so make it easier for the people to escape. You can lock the main gate completely, um, which, uh, as you can see, is, does mean it uh, access is only possible with the highest level keycard. Um, and when it is called um, blocked right here, um, or disable, or whatever, it will mean that it uh, can't be enabled uh, with a keycard again. Okay. Ah, we have it! We have what? Oh! Uh, ah! Alarm <laughs> main gate three times wrong keycard door locked. Okay. Yeah, and we can reset it here. <laughs> yeah, we didn't remember that. That's what we mean by it's been some time since we built it. Uh, so as One we can could say, mean this thing was built by a bunch of dementia patients. <laughs> you can lock the main gate, you can lock the QA door, the civilian area doors, um, disable the roof exit, so this means uh, you can't open it if you have a keycard, uh, and lock the combat decks, again you need a keycard for that then, and also you have indications here which one of these doors are opened, and uh, the ladder in the front will be blocked in case you lock either the middle or the lower combat decks. Oh, anything also you'll else. hear a tone when those doors are opened. Oh yeah, yeah, there will be a single chime once uh, these lamps get illuminated. So basically the idea is uh, you're sitting here on the command chair, you hear a chime, you go over and take a look at the panel, look what changed. Next thing, dispensers. fire dispensers, the flamethrowers, um, yeah, self-explanatory. This is the enable cannons locally, so if you want to fire a cannon at the cannon itself, you oh. need to enable this. Huh? We just ignored that when we uh, got Oh it. yeah, yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> the main cannon has its uh, has to be enabled separately, and also the cannons, again, have to be enabled. And it's yeah. indicated by this blinking box right here. Yeah, um, also, everything which can blink at front, except of the uh, blinking dots on the clock, everything else is uh, exactly synchronized, so... Um, all alerts and so on, so when your walkie goes to fuck, you at least know the lamps are satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can lock the bridge doors uh, with, this, with this one. Um, also, yet again, access only possible with the commando card. Uh, again, you can sample the sensors right here. And no, we've got the important features. Uh, the hazard lights, yeah. If you know that, German tanks have to be road legal. Um, this one isn't exactly because we don't, uh, we didn't have space to fit indicators on the front and rear view mirrors and everything, but we do have indicators on the backside, just like the original. Um, yes, for example, also some things they have to put up before they are able to drive on the road. So there's that, I guess. Oh, yeah. But in general, German tanks have to be able to be converted to road legal so they can drive in convoys and anything. Um, yeah, and of course there are hazard lights, so we'll just uh, activate both indicators at the same time. Um, also, um, these are the functions for the um, for the main entrance and exit. Um, to retain the keycard, to require the keycard, if you press retain keycard, it will automatically also require a keycard, of course. And if uh, you press this, it will just disable the code lock, and you can just use a, a keycard to get into the war game. And you can get out of a commando card. No, this is no, no. This is uh, ah, this ah, button yeah, here. Yeah, and yeah, no, mind, mind. I thought yeah, this was the other one. Um. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't really fit together, but uh, it was a space restriction, basically because we needed the status lamps here, uh, but didn't need them for here. 
and there was space left. So whatever. Yeah, um, it's a bit interesting to plan a bridge where you have to lay out uh, you have to lay out all the buttons, but you don't even know what uh, what buttons uh, there will be and what functions the warrior will have. So if you're planning a warrior, basically you have to better choose. Than this. Yeah, you have to choose between two evils. One is to build the bridge first, and basically decide on what kind of features you will be able to include or uh, at least include space for them and pre-plan those. Or you can just build the war gear first and have to include space for a bridge that's big enough. And usually if you do that, you don't leave enough space and you're angry because there's so much uh, space um, that is used up by something else and there's no space left for the bridge and you're just annoyed at that and everything. It's really yeah, horrible. So, so basically you build both at the same time. It's not ideal, but at least you kind of have a clue what you can uh, put in here. Um, yeah, okay. for example, uh, our last Mega Wargy before this, MV3, also has uh, a kind of weird bridge. You can see it by the way it is uh, by the way it is uh, formed. So it has a main room, it has side rooms, and it has another room because we didn't have enough space. And then there are stairs down to another room because we completely forgot about some functions that uh, we also need, but can at least be grouped in one room. Yeah, we didn't, uh, it just came to me that we didn't even talk about the design and how it's a Leopard 2 tank and everything, but uh, I think you yeah, figured that one out. It's a Leopard 2, uh, yes. Uh, a anything, whatever. Um, the A stands for anything, because yeah, we really include um, features from all between 4 and 6 and maybe 7, whatever. Uh, the camouflage so is accurate, somewhere along that line. So. Um, at least as far as we know. So we did our best to uh, make the design as close as possible to the original. So uh, we <laughs> uh, brushed on the uh, pattern with placeholder blocks. I made uh, blocks with digital camo, pulled them into Minecraft, built a whole block of them, uh, a bit staggered so it looks uh, okay from all sides. This I replaced into three colors and then I brushed this on onto the placeholders and this is why we don't have just flat colors on the war gear because it's just didn't look good in that size. It's always a thing, it, it's enormous, so we can't just uh, have it as detailed as, as the original regarding the paint. Yeah, uh, what we do have are the uh, insignias. They're not scaled correctly because it wasn't really possible, but on one side we've got the German army insignia, and on the other side we've got a Ukrainian trident. Um, we actually included this design feature before uh, Germany actually delivered these tanks to Ukraine, so uh, there's that. We were predicting the future, whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, we have this, which are grenade launchers, I think. We actually oh, got... Slam us if yeah, Kogema is, is so, uh, yeah. one of our team members, is actually uh, a tank commander, so... Uh, well, he's in the Bundeswehr at the moment, he isn't a tank anymore, so... Yeah, but he used to be, at least, whatever. Um, so we have actually people um, that got us, it's like the war from the firms, you know, we got classified information to uh, build this war here, very good. All the, uh, all the pictures you saw from uh, Leopard 2 from the inside are wrong, this is the correct way they look from the inside. <laughs> yeah, they're a little uh. green men inside. Okay, yeah. so I think let's finally uh, um, do the like cannons. Premier. Okay, if you take a look, we already mentioned the, the sensors right here. Above them, we have a, a sign indicating where the cannon is located and what kind of cannon it is. So all of these are stab cannons, except this one, which is the main cannon. You also got the position right here, and it means it's on the upper level, which is U, then a dash, and then inner right, IR, and so on. We've got outer right, inner left, and outer left. Same yeah. for the center deck. You should probably figure it out. And the lower deck. Okay. On the back uh, side, um, we have uh, the Ripple Cannons, upper and lower level, although the upper level is on the level of the lower step cannons and the lower level is below everything. Everything um, is relative. You see in the cannons have here uh, four buttons, uh, the same for the height. And uh, yeah, it is quite weird how we, um, how we got the signal to the cannon and back, because uh, all those four buttons use the same, uh, same cable. Yeah, so we've got the signals encoded. Yeah, exactly. And the the one fire button. And if you take a look, the gold gold line is it? I think. Um, yeah. I was just uh, confused by the by their own tech, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, the gold so, line um, um, signal strength encoded. Um, if you, <laughs> this is really interesting. You. The first one had to be a, a two tick repeater, 
um, because the signal needs a, a two tex signal length at least, and of course observers only output one take yeah. of signal length. Yeah, because uh, if we want to use comparators, which we really need for space saving at some points, uh, we need a two tick signal, like here. Yeah, if you and don't know, we... you can't feed an observer signal through a comparator, which was really yeah. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you can see we uh, somehow uh, got this cable behind the back here and out around the bridge. Yeah, th this camera is going to the front, by the way, so just to illustrate yeah. um, what kind of space um, restrictions we have, so we have to go the wrong way first. Yeah. Um, uh, of co of course, uh, this has a higher delay than a normal uh, cable, but you can see we uh, basically uh, basically needed uh, for top this cable, and it's still that much, and we still didn't have any space, so it's it's certainly the better variant. Um, uh, the same uh, goes the other way around, at least for these three lamps here. Yeah, which indicate because the current we... uh, elevation mode yeah. of the cannon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This lamp here is separate because if uh, this lamp would be the same um, uh, or the same signal, only one uh, lamp could be on, of course, at one time. Because how would you decode it else with uh, one line and redstone the signal strength? Uh, so basically, if we did it the same way we did it from here through the cannon, these lamps would go out when the cannon fires, and this is stupid. So we just put another lamp, uh, line in here, and also this lamp can blink for a bit when the cannon fires. And it's not just this button, it is really the signal from the cannon back here, cannon fires. Yeah, which means that if you either switch the mode uh, at the cannon itself or fire the cannon, um, the feedback will be displayed here as well. Um, so this is really a command center for the cannons. Um, you just need people in the front to load the cannons and then you can fire them from here and basically have a combat information center, whatever, give commands. It's really great for roleplay. And yeah, or I just think from the front, you can also use it there, that's no problem. So just to illustrate, uh, when I choose a cannon and just uh, press one of the mode buttons, as we can see, uh, if you look at the legend, uh, yellow is to hit the center, green is to hit the lower part, and red is basically shoot straight. Um, it's, it says upper, but it doesn't shoot up, as I think it just shoots straight then. Same height, yeah. Okay, um, and if you press yeah, the dark red button, it will fire the cannon. Cannon is uh, basically um, basically modified to have those modes. Uh, in, uh, in the original version, it just uh, could uh, shoot straight. And it's far easier to build a mode shooting down uh, in an already existing cannon, because uh, at least in this one, because the cannon uh, uh, has those uh, chambers where TNT uh, uh, yeah, where TNT is, uh, TNT falls down, gets uh, compressed onto one block. But of course, um, you uh, don't leave space. Uh, uh, you don't leave space for something uh, in chambers where TNT could fly. If you maybe build a cannon the other way in the future, so there was no space, and from the place uh, it get the uh, product get shot, um, there's no tech under it, so this was no problem. But not the other way around. Yeah. Um, but for this reason, the cannons have to be a bit staggered, so they're not all at the same level, basically, to allow um, the cannons above them to shoot past, for the same reason. Um, okay, so I think I'm just gonna fly out of the war you now, um, and take a look at the test block while Miney is gonna fire some cannons, if you will. Also, we can take a quick look, um, because there will be some uh, bulkheads opening, which are secret redstone doors uh, inside of the outer skin. So where are you gonna fire first? Could be there already. Oh, it is, yes. I just didn't yes. notice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as you can see, this is the lower mode of the cannons. There is a bit of a step in there, but it's the full 220 blocks, should be at least. At least it usually is. Um, you can also add the cannon itself, change the projectile delay. Um, one tick per shot basically and shoot up to four times and get a maximum depth of maybe around 600 blocks or something. Yeah, yeah now you have uh, those cannons are all the same deck, so you can see the three uh, modes. Yeah, so um, this was the upper deck, right? Um, cannons on the yeah. upper deck. So it gives a good distribution uh, of firepower. Of course, you can, all, can do all of these modes. Um, at every cannon, just uh, need to reload them, of course. And of course, you've got the cannons on the lower side too. There's a bit more firepower on the lower half because there was just more space, but uh, yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, uh, maybe we should, uh, when we're already out here, we could here just look at the outlook because uh, the lookout, we or... forgot to show it. <laughs> well, we weren't there uh, at first. Yeah, so... but will we go there? Which Probably one? not. Yeah, whatever. So it's on, the, it's on the center step deck, this one. Um, you can just trigger the enemy sighted uh, thing here. Anyway, if you, if you see the enemy uh, from this wonderful uh, lookout, you can uh, report it in the bridge. And uh, yeah, by default, as I said, this uh, bulkhead is closed, so the warrior doesn't look weird from the outside or anything. Um, and that will be displayed here. And if you yeah. just take a quick look, uh, we've got again an item kiosk and uh, the stab cannons on the center. So the usual stuff, it's basically on every cannon deck. Then we've got the ripple cannons, if you will. Um, open fire, please. Yeah, as you can see, the bulkheads open up and uh, they're a bit more spreading out. Um, if you shoot multiple times with them, they will dig into the, um, the warrior a bit more. So the more you shoot, the more volume of damage you'll get. Um, at first, the damage so, really sucks, but if you shoot, I, I don't know, 10 times with them, it yeah. uh, looks more impressive, yeah. Basically, the step cannons are uh, to uh, disable the main cannons of your enemy, and those are there to clean up. If you shoot, uh, and of course you've got eight of them, so if you uh, man them with uh, eight people or something, you can just disintegrate the whole test block, basically. Yeah. Um, can be to quite a certain extent. extent. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, then we've got the flame for us, if you will. There we go. I will also fire the lower step deck. So all of these are the, um, the straight mode, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because if you actually because, shoot yeah. the lower ones in the lowest mode, they actually dig up the dirt, basically. Um, yeah, all it was of them definitely shoots. planned and not something we had to do because uh, we could put the cannons much higher. Yeah, as you can see, the um, the fireballs also enter the um, enter the damage and set the innards on fire. Whatever you can switch them off. I think they're nine stacks each, and. Then too laggy. Yeah. <laughs> Set fire tick to thoughts real quick. Yeah, but as you can see, uh, you can dish out quite a bit with this war gear, and of course, every one of these cannons has three modes, so they are. And this um, isn't everything by far. Yeah, so the enemy will look like a Swiss cheese if you shoot yeah. them long enough. Yeah, so uh, we have six of the main cannons we haven't fired, the main main cannon we haven't fired, and uh, of course all the separate boats we haven't fired. There is a bunch um, you can try out with this one. Yeah, and we won't of, fire every mode. Um, speaking of the main cannon, uh, we'll get there in time, um, but let's just quickly discuss how it works. Um, you um, need... Huh? Will we do it right now or when we're up there? Uh, well, yeah, we can do it when we get there, so we can look forward to something. Uh, it's basically, like you have to wait for the fun stuff. Yeah, okay. So, um, let's go back up through the stairway. We also wonder what time. Yeah. <laughs> the original that show was about two hours. Um, let's see how long this one will be. Yeah, uh, the, uh, this the meeting room. The, yeah, the meeting room, yeah, the most important and, room of the war gear. Yeah, and here, yeah, this room here is more important because it has uh, such fancy signs. <laughs> yeah, do not armor because uh, there are looking panels here. So, um, people kept placing endstone here, so, <laughs> which won't be named. Who is, uh, yeah, I don't know who. <laughs> yeah um, so here, this is basically oh. where the unproductiveness started. There's also it's an the untranslated board. sign here. Um, whatever. <laughs> if this is a German, German joke that is not horrible. translatable. Yeah. Ah. yeah, so uh, we have uh, the Schwarze Brett. It's basically the blackboard. Board, basically, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but it's not a blackboard. It's a board where you can uh, post stuff, for example, uh, Facebook for people over 140. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, it's just a bunch and of jokes also right here. And English then we got the idiots. board colored board because it wasn't black, and then uh, yeah, and then the stupid comments started, and we have basically 
something like this. Everywhere yeah. in the war, yeah, especially the in the uh, civilian area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially in the civilian area, also those timetables. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, so in the meeting room, we've got a bingo, a state visit, Council of War, War Games, Family Movie, and Days Off on Friday and Saturday. We forgot a sign. I already, uh, mm. Yes, I said localization error. Okay, this is the meeting room. We've got uh, all active yeah. and inactive members, really, of Wartech. Um, yeah, yeah, or at least those Kalkenstein didn't forget. And you we were, forgot some. Which is not really a member, but he helped us in the war, so... Whatever. Well, he is a member, but he's not a member. It's uh, a bit weird. It's uh, complicated, yeah. It's a situation, <laughs> as you say. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Um, also, uh, these levers here get replaced for uh, from the comment blocks for life. Oh, yeah. Um, Levers, yeah. Because this looks good, and Modrang uh, removed our invisible redstone. Yeah, basically uh, before 1.14, I think, when you placed redstone uh, on a on a barrier block barrier. and looked at it from below, um, the redstone uh, wouldn't be visible. But now it also has a texture from below, so um, yeah, it's a bit annoying. Um, yeah. Anyway, oh, it um, looks kind of like shit now. Um, <laughs> we can uh, just use this feature here for a second. You already did it. You can throw in a key card here, which will come back to you right here. And I open this door, Kaltenstein. which is an emergency exit. And you can exit here. In an or don't if you're not fast enough. <laughs> yeah. And can I get also, my key card back, please? No. Um, there's this, which is uh, IV for MV4, or... Um, <laughs> this is not a localization error, this is literally untranslatable. Again, untranslatable jokes, whatever. Let's just get out of here. Every water is my button. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so if you think you're missing out, uh, I can assure you they're also not funny in German. Um, yeah, this video is not sponsored by Duolingo. Okay, um, this one is the uh, feature that can change the um, the code on the code log. So basically the way you use it is, um, you insert a commando card here, insert with this button, progress and bar will light up. Get the civil card. Then you can uh, choose a code log here, which is the civil yeah. card. Then wait until the progress bar is, uh, yeah, it's off. Yeah. This means the, um, the code log has been reset. And now you can enter a new code. Um, the default codes are displayed here. Right now it is 0 to 9 in order, and I think mine is now inputting 9 to 0 in order. Yeah. Um, uh, also, this thing up here is a bit slow. I'm waiting now so it can catch up. So it is actually uh, showing which, uh, which uh, thing is already set. So yeah. We so are missing. There, so you can continue with 2 now, yeah. It, of course, is signal strength encoded, um, which needs to be... Um, it needs time. <laughs> yeah, because it basically needs a, a comparator line from all the way down. Yeah. So we'll yeah, just also, wait for Also, if a uh, mm. code isn't set, you can't eject your card. Yeah, exactly. But now, because the progress bar is complete, um, you can just eject the key card, which will set the code. And... No, the code is already set. Okay. And the key card is here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's quite a uh, quite interesting feature. We also made a tutorial for we made yeah we made made a tutorial for it. It's in German, but uh, yeah, mute it and you can still build it. I think, I think I haven't found another one, but I think this is the uh, most compact design where you can actually have a sequential code uh, code lock and can. Uh, can reset it like this and not with some flowers or something. These are, of course, more compact, but um, with uh, just a press of a button, you can set this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a compact one of these. If you find a more compact one, let us know. Otherwise, um... otherwise, I'm telling a lie for like two years now. Um, <laughs> no, I meant here. Uh, I think there was a, a code lock competition for the most compact sequential code lock, but of course, without the reprogrammable constraint. Yeah. Um, so yeah, crafty masterman, please um, contact us. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, so right now uh, we are on one, your Discord. <laughs> yes. Um, this is the black box we were talking about. Um, basically, uh, this records uh, like um, an air traffic, not air traffic, an air data recorder recalls all of the actions you take on the bridge uh, in item form. 
So if you take a look, um, for every um, time interval, uh, there is one of these black Schalke boxes, yeah. which basically indicates the amount of time mm -hmm. that has passed. Yeah. Just one thing before before we get uh, reports for us. Yeah, we know when you uh, change the mode of a cannon, it will uh, the um, the lower mode will blink up once. This was not really fixable for us, and so you get basically double the items in the uh, black box. It will send a uh, right mode, a wrong mode, and then a right mode again. Yeah, you will have to learn to read it because we didn't have time, energy, or something like that to fix this. This is more or less Basically, a experimental feature because yeah, we, no, we, we, you don't need it. We also didn't have space for that, to be honest, because the system was already in place and this came as an add-on, yeah. basically. And basically what it does, it, it takes the displays you get in the bridge. So if one of the displays in the bridge has a, a blinks up um, as an artifact of the, um, of the way it is detected, it will also be displayed in the black box. Also, yeah. what you get is um, with the key, uh, with the code lock reset, you will get two items. One is for resetting um, the code, which will light up the progress bar. And one is for um, basically reaching completion with the progress bar. So the dispenser for the item is at the end of the progress bar. So you get two items, one for resetting and one for completing the code. Yeah. So okay. uh, if you learn to read it, you can read it, but uh, it's hard. It is. It's okay. not that great. Um, we skipped over um, that part in the bridge, so I'm just gonna go back there real quick. Um, yeah. Because you can the disable the black box and delete the lock, we'll do that later. Um, but what's more important is the information here. Because depending on the vigilance level, the time interval of um, the Schalke boxes being filled differs. Also, um, when 27 items get placed into a Schalke box, it is automatically automatically broken and replaced. You should have it high enough so you can have a stable timekeeping uh, mechanism, so you know when in the uh, our when exactly the Schalke box got filled up, so you can basically reconstruct it to a minute more or less. Yeah, you can of course when you do it right, when you go through off the Schalke box, you will of course get the items for increasing vigilance or decreasing vigilance, so you can just kind of reconstruct what time interval is um, is at play at the moment. Also, For example, if you um, do a Wargear fight, so yes. if you have a war another, another Wargear fight against it, we didn't explain really the part, but yeah, you can have two of them and fight against each other. Um, if you have it, um, you can just put it completely up and maybe those two black boxes that can be, uh, that can be stored are enough that uh, in the highest modes you can more or less reconstruct every uh, every uh, minute of the fight, more or less. But I think it could be quite interesting after the fight to see when what failed, for example, and when yeah. you shot what. It's quite nice. Probably. Because, of course, you get indication what cannon was fired, what damage sensors were triggered, what modes were changed and everything. Um, so it's really interesting for that. Also, what doors you, were opened. And when you uh, change the mode at front, I don't think that it lights up here twice. Ooh, not sure because... I'm also not sure, but I think so. I, I think the reason it lights up twice is because uh, one of the modes is just uh, the two other modes aren't activated. And the end gate, I think, flickers a bit because it's not timed correctly. Um, uh, it's weird, but not really fixable with the mechanism. I, I don't in, see so. why it would be any different because this is just red zone line that triggers the trigger uh. at the cannon. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, but these are shorter signals and so on. Uh, yeah. True. Okay. Um, okay. Whatever. Um, as my just time ago. hinted at, um, the system of course has three chests which rotate through. So if um, these double chests are filled. Black box one uh, will go off and um, be the stored black box. Black box two will activate and be the active one. Meanwhile, black box three will be emptied if there is anything left there. And of course, if black box two is filled, black box three will get activated and black box one will be emptied. Yeah, so you have uh, always at least a whole black box of history. That's why we built this that way. Uh, yeah, I think it's quite nice. Yeah, the shaker boxes. Um, the shaker boxes get recycled, but the um, the inners just don't because there was no conceivable way of getting them back into the dispensers or droppers that um, actually insert them into the hopper lines. And speaking yeah. of the hopper lines, um, 
there also wasn't that much space left to include actual waterways for the items, so most of them are hopper lines, which of course um, make them quite slow. So especially those which are on the other side of the bridge, so yeah, functions in, in this area are especially much slower. Doors. Yeah, especially the doors are much slower um, in yeah. response and getting recorded into the black boxes. Yeah, and than also anything else. You have, yeah. Keep in mind, every door has sent something here, so it really wasn't possible to send it back. And yeah, um, yeah you have a dispenser basically full with uh, nine stacks of them, and you don't open it that often. Absolutely. So right now we can uh, hear some noises. That means the black box is currently um, getting sent up. We've got it's a new shortcut box here. <laughs> yeah, you can see um, it's all in German. As we said, the localization of the items was just too much to do. Um, yeah. So if you you can use Google Translate or anything, really the feature isn't... Use Deeple. Deeple is far better. Okay, whatever. I don't know what that is. Uh... Um, Whatever. You can we see can right now, um, this is the first one, black box reactivated, that will be uh, displayed once the bridge is basically on. Then uh, all the candle modes get displayed because all the lights turn on on the bridge. And uh, then Miney changed the time of the clock. Mm. Yeah, and... Uh, all of that uh, happened. <laughs> well, there's a small problem. Uh, this could be quite difficult to... Uh, to translate, um, yeah, basically the way we wrote this with those uh, M is Mitte, so the middle mode. Center, U, U is, is not U. upper, but unten, so lower, yeah. and O is and over o and is upper. Um, yeah, so um, it's not that yeah. easy to read, L and R are the same, so not yes. that easy, but... Ah, and uh, the uh, inner, and, uh, inner and outer are the other way around, so... Um, written uh, links außen and not in our left you also, can figure uh, this out if you by, really by want to by the way the, um, what we just looked at the, that was the one we did before we actually started that show yesterday so yesterday we also activated the bridge for a short time and changed the time um, yeah this is uh, the second one from today um, the sensors were manually sampled black box timers um, were decreased this is the vigilance one um, there was damage detected um, the sampling rate got changed and uh, the doors opened because of the vigilance mode increasing. Yeah, whatever. It's uh, it's a really buggy system and experimental, really. So um, you get the gist of what it's trying to do, but I still think there are bugs left in the system. You get the gist. Um, most of the functions yeah. are um, uh, can be changed there. There are um, six functions left down here. Um, the workbenches in the... Traditions? Um, it is traditional to include this button since uh, our good friend and team member Orzo um, made his Mega Warrior V4, which was um, an absolute yeah, game changer. The way we think about Mega Warriors, really, it just uh, it set the scene for uh, what we built a few years later. So if you want to know about this, uh, it's really only available in German. But uh, yeah, Google for it. It's, it's called Warrior and version four Blue Cat. And, uh, it's yeah, amazing. so V4. Is <laughs> Don't try to do it after version 4, you will find it. Uh, yeah, and it's German and it's 10 years ago. <laughs> it's not exactly, is it? I think, ooh, I think the video was in uh, 2015, but it was built in 2014. Oh, Jesus, okay. But anyway, it's from 1.7, but it was, uh, in principle, it uh, was a very interesting war game. It had really interesting designs and technologies. Anyway, um,. So the workbenches are a bit of tradition because uh, he included the first hidden workbench behind the wall we we had ever seen, and it was such an amazing feature. So we, uh, as an homage, we include this in every other war gear. Of course, this one is a bit more advanced because it just uh, disappears into the floor and not just into the wall. Anyway, the concrete mixers can be disabled, and the item sorters can also be uh, disabled. That basically shuts down the whole system. On the other side, um, we have fireworks, so a bunch of rockets, um, activate beacons, two beacons at the top, right next to the antennas, we'll show that uh, when we're outside again. And uh, we can disable the shooting range for our American friends. Yeah, we got something in the civilian area. Uh, um, oh. Okay, yeah, let's go look at um, some First Amendment stuff, I think. Yeah, um, by the way, here's also a big description well, for everything, yeah. so... Is it the Second Amendment? Write in the comments if it's... Oh, please don't write in the comments, we don't... We just don't forget care. what I said. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, we've got some instructions here. Um, also on the other side, there are some more general ones. 
yeah, so if you didn't understand something and want to look it up, we've got some general information here. I think we will just teleport through the door. No, 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 because we want a bridge to shut down. And, um, oh, one second, okay. I'll turn off the volume so you can listen to it. We've got the Windows XP shutdown sound. Because why not? Uh, this is self destruction. Yeah. This was horrible because. See there are, yeah. It's also um, a joke that's basically untranslatable, whatever. Yeah. So you can see there are seven lamps and three blocks in length in the window. So this was horrible. Yeah, it looks it's basically, chaotic, but yeah. it also is. <laughs> this whole war here is a tale of not being able to fit something you want into it and then trying regardlessly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So we're back in the main lobby. Um, this way we can go to the center cannon deck. We already went there. So I think we'll go up this way and come back through. No, wait, no, 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 we can. Do you Let's want go to, to do the main cannon first? Or? Yes, 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 we'll do the main cannon first. He doesn't care about watch time, horrible. <laughs> We've got a self-destruct as a, as a hook. There's the elevator. Ah, that could have been too quick. Oh, it wasn't okay. Nice glass wall. <laughs> nice crossy. Uh, people might actually think his name is Jossie. <laughs> it's uh, Jesse, but we call him Jossie, so... <laughs> yeah. Whatever. So, we're in the uppermost deck now. Um, let's go to... Uh, uh, um, there are also stairs, if you... Oh, yeah. uh, somehow want to walk. It's a very busy area up here, so this is the uh, main access point to the main cannon, which is uh, the 1120 projectile yeah. staff cannon. <laughs> you see all those chambers? This is one cannon. <laughs> yeah, so basically how it works is in front here we got the projectiles. They get uh, compressed down here and get flung with a slime block. To this central point we've got some auxiliary TNTs here that propel it right back. Um, into this area where it uh, gets compressed onto this block here, pixel perfect, and we also got the uh, um, propellants, I think, <laughs> that's what you call them, the propellants right here, um, they get flown with a slam block uh, in the back of that, right here, and shot through the barrel. That hell um, even bother to uh, translate Ansetzer? It's a term Tuni that borrowed from World of Tanks, I think. Um, I don't actually know what that's called, but it's, it's, there's a special term for that. It's called Ansetzer in German, uh, these uh, special propellants here. Whatever, they're, um, yeah, they're just propellants, whatever. Okay, uh, so first we have to enable the cannon um, again with a Commando Carter. If you press this, the cannon shows enabled, get the card back, and then we can fire the cannon here. The same goes in the bridge. Of course, now I shut down the bridge, but if the bridge is uh, activated, you will be able to... I can find it. Uh, see the status of the cannon here. Um, again, if the bridge is activated right now, it is not. Um, then you can fire it from here, and you can also basically remote control the key card reader that is upstairs. Okay, so mining just force load the block. Um, in case you're wondering, we actually wanted to include that into the force loading button, but it turns out there is a limit how many chunks you can actually force load by uh, within the Minecraft. So we installed uh, a chunky program. I think it's called chunky. Um, no, chunky oh, no, something else. Keep chunks. Oh, I keep chunks, okay. Yeah, chunky is the render program I'm using, sorry. Now, keep chunks, um, we're using that to force load the test block because otherwise the TNTs will just disappear and don't deal any damage. Okay, so without further ado, I'm just gonna fire the cannon right here. Prepare for you a huge lag. Use, yeah, you <laughs> could also like use five or six person people uh, to uh, load the stuff and, well, well, there it is. There's no real point in firing it again because it only has the one setting. Um, but as you can There's see, there's no real point in firing it once. Yeah, it just continues on forever and ever and ever and ever. There's no real point. This is the end. If you look the at the whole our point of this cannon, uh, we had 220 projectile cannons with a 220 uh, 20, uh, block uh, deep uh, step as the normal weapons. What should we put behind this 
barrel. What should we put behind it? Yeah, because the barrel creates I think expectations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we hope we've, uh, we've fulfilled these expectations with this shot. Yeah, and so it uh, was a uh, whole 1120. Yeah, so it uh, performed admirably. No, uh, no block of performance has been lost. Yeah, <laughs> they usually do. There, I, I think, and I, I, I don't think there is an out of this exploding. The the little ones do have uh, a chance of exploding um, because of just Minecraft being Minecraft. But this one is, I think, completely. 100% yeah, this reliable. one shouldn't have. Yeah, some nice features in this game, like we call it micro motions. Uh, basically, TNT can move without uh, having a reason to. And it can it's then bad. clip <laughs> into these uh, the entrances you need to leave for uh, the people. Yeah, this uh, this um, also, but not here, not here. But uh, for example, if those pistons extend and uh, TNT falls down from here to here, and those pistons are already extended, it could be that one TNT. Um, catches on the edge of the piston and stays here and, of course, explodes here. Micromotions. So, if you go in front here, we've got another one of these kiosks. Um, it again works the same. It's a bit bigger because we only have the one on the stack and we've got the bigger cannon, so you need more TT. I don't know. A um, bit more. A skylight for some reason and then another lookout. You can just uh, look. Uh, down the barrel, really, and uh, look what you destroyed. Yeah. If your render distance is high enough, again, you've got to yeah. report enemy sighting and look what disabled status lamp. Yeah. And what are these uh, things on the barrel? Um, we have been told those are so you can check if the barrel is still, um, if it shoots straight still. Yeah. So. Ah. Okay. It's a little laser or something like that fired along it, and so you can, uh, uh -huh. you can test the barrel. Will still hit where you expect it to. Yes, our uh, our bell always has shot straight, so I think we're still in good condition. But I think we yeah. only shot a few times with this cannon. I don't know yeah. how many shots uh, you can fire without replacing a barrel on a leopard two. So, uh, yeah. This one is still fairly new. Um, yeah, we've got four more of these uh, step cannons here right now. Uh, here you can see what they look like empty. So we've got 110 projectiles in one of these chambers, and we've got two of them. Yeah, so the, uh, the bigger cannon is actually more comfortable to load, yeah. but it's also bigger, so <laughs> we Especially have space it is, uh, it's wider, so if you look, we also had a um, restriction on how long they could be, so um, yeah, yeah we, we went for a more tall cannon instead of a wider cannon. Um, yeah, and if you go back this way, uh, we'll end up right where we came from. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. Yeah, anyway, it's another fix for the update log. Um, okay, so we're back here with the elevator. Of course, the same thing can be found on the other side. And we'll just go back here this time. Yeah, um, and here starts the civilian area. Civil area, if you're mining entrance, letting a sign. Whatever. Um, so we're in the civilian area now. I and you. Yeah, we've got a uh, choice of directions now. Uh. Yeah, let's go do the second amendment first. Um, this is the shooting yeah. range. Um, you can take yeah. a bow and arrow here, and um, yeah, and then there you have the walking distance of um, 50 blocks. of 164.042 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, so if you're doing a war, you find not after... something like that. Something like exactly that. We uh, re re wrote it uh, down there for Americans. So again, you can practice uh, shooting at target blocks right here and you get an indication um, how close to the center you hit. You forgot something. Yeah. The most important feature. Oh, the move background feature. Yeah, the clouds are moving. Right. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's this, which is the hard mount. Um, so many people, when they're building competitive workers, include these bow stands, uh, which basically allow you to shoot through, but uh, you're way harder to hit. So you can practice that as well here. Basically, you drill your crew in fighting um, by the time you encounter an enemy warrior or something. So, neat feature. There's actually a special uh, kind of chime that plays when you hit uh, the dead center of the target block. But it's, you have to like hit pixel perfect, so it's basically impossible to hit from this distance. Um, at least not reliable. Um... At least with the bow stands on. Okay, if you just disable those and... Uh, it played once. 
already. Yeah, whatever. So if, if the full 15 points of signal strength um, come out of the target block, it will play a special chain, whatever. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Pretty simple, but uh, yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. These are the our officers' quarters, quarters uh, which is, yeah, our quarters. <laughs> Um, you need a commando kata for that. Basically, commando kata. There are only two of them, so for the two of us, which are kind of supposed so, to be the highest. So now officers. you will see the absolute nightmare of anyone learning German. Uh, this cat. Forst du mit Gedächtniskatze zu Katze Gedächtniskatze. I promise this is a valid phrase. <laughs> yes, um, kinda. Um, yeah, the <laughs> nice thing in German is you can put words together and have a new word. And uh, we had a cat that uh, was called Horst Ümit. Uh, it broke. <laughs> 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 then we got another one, and we got a Horst Ümit Gedächtniskatze. And because it sat uh, on a weird place, it had a cat for symmetry on the other side, as was the Horst Ümit Gedächtniskatze Symmetrie Katze, and this is the Horst Ümit Gedächtniskatze Symmetrie Katze Gedächtniskatze. So it's a memorial cat for the Horst Ümit Symmetrie Katze Gedächtniskatze. Which is itself a symmetry cat for the uh, memorial cat mm. for Horst Ümit yeah. the first. And then, of course, and there was Horst Ümit the, the second. The <laughs> Horst Ümit the second is fine, but he sits in MV3. Yeah, and, and of course now we've got Horst Ümit the first. Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we've got a cold storage here. Whatever it is, it's just decoration in these rooms. Let's go quickly through it. Yes. We've got a television with a sound system, a bathroom, this... Uh, Garderobe, which um, got recycled over and over again. Yeah, uh, ah. I can't bring my joke because it doesn't work. That mm. good? Yeah, whatever. We have got a um, uh, got a basement for spirits and yeah. uh, sleeping room. Yeah. And on the upper deck, we have uh, what is this? Oh, another bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Um, gaming PC. <laughs> we need one with the Bauordnung. And oh. Oh, jeez. It's these jokes. Not my joke, okay? You can't... Okay, this is this is supposed to be a printer. And this is Painter. Painter. We call him Printer. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> and someone placed the head there. Um, uh, okay, and we've got another sleeping room. Mm, and a piano. So you like, mis you like missing... Uh, Four years of law or something like that for this joke to make sense, but it's horrible. Um, More than five years, <laughs> but yeah. Well, of, of watching law, Joker is not, uh, or Painter is not really that long uh, in the team. Three but, and a half. Yeah, it's still pretty long. So, around four. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, in case you're, in case you're wondering, yeah, if, uh, this is the banner I got on my ender chest, it's, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it was for MV2, which was um, uh, now horrible English, looking. We did a, a, an English let's show of that. It was also a German tank we built, um, but it's far inferior but, to this one. Yeah, it's technically really horrible. And, and yeah, outdated and whatever. Okay. And it's not really good looking, so yeah. For okay. old people here. Huh? Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> the telephone table. Um, in case you remember... There was a time when there were telephones that needed to have a wire connection to the wall. So we'd have a table with the telephone and some uh, some chair <laughs> beside that, where I would sit down specifically to phone somebody. Yeah, good old times, I guess. Uh, uh -huh. And now we just get a panic attack when we have to call someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is my kitchen here. Um, with this nice door in the wall and uh, another basement where you can store spirits or whatever. Yep. Um, if you know Kaltestein, you wouldn't eat here. Uh, well, I'm not that great of a cook. Yeah, you probably have a Lebensmittelvergiftung. <laughs> also one German word. One of the words of all time. <laughs> um, yeah, the most symmetrical uh, living space of all time. <laughs> yeah. I uh, really like symmetry, so this has uh, like 12 axes of symmetry. Yeah, the TV, the table, the fireplace doesn't work at all at all, but uh, whatever. Let's just go upstairs. Um, we have another bathroom and 
another well not gaming PC but whatever this is supposed to be uh, PC another guide rope and uh, nothing else uh, open the door don't place walls okay um, back here up. yeah we've got the uh, um, the less well fortuned uh, yeah the, the crew quarters basically you've got three people three bunks at least and Probably six people sleeping here. Um, another recycling bin yeah. and these um, razor thin <laughs> walls. <laughs> yeah, um, we, learn fr we learned from our German history with Plattenbauten um, and just put these is the lower side of the iron door, place world edit here. So, um, yeah, we needed space for a given, uh, for a given number of people because uh, we calculated this and yeah. Either we had a, a three uh, three right room with uh, beds on one side and basically a two right um, hallway. floor. Um, yeah, whatever. Hallway, whatever. Yeah, you would literally sleep in the hallway. It was too wide, and so we <laughs> at least got nearly nearly another full block. Out yeah, of we've here got the so. recycling bin now. That wasn't possible before. Um, yeah, so it's it looks larger. <laughs> <laughs> it is larger. Yeah. It isn't, but it looks. I mean, and yeah. this wall is still like more, an eighth of a meter. More place to stand, but nothing useful. If you look at the door, it is still an eighth of a meter thick. So, um, uh, or no, it's actually it's actually three pixels in default. So it's actually thicker than that. So it's it's really thick wall if you think about it. Um, yeah, but you probably for American standards, for European <laughs> standards, this is uh, cardboard. Yeah, but if you bang against the wall, you'll probably hear it next door. And we've got a bunch yeah. of these rooms here. Um, there are you no don't know words. American doors, uh, American walls, right? Yeah, I do. If you okay, bang just... against the American wall, you have a fa uh, you have a window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some are reserved for um, some of our team members. So there's smash potion of instant kill, and a stupid check mark. Renflitzer keeps placing everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, there is uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. No, uh. oh, where? oh, it isn't actually here. Uh, where is it? And Drenflitzer is also called Spaten for a reason, <laughs> which is spade in German, if you're wondering. Yeah. So we like our team members really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we name our team team members after tools because sometimes they are. Um, <laughs> Okay, now uh, this is Yuri Now's quarters. Um, it's got the 60s design style here, which I really like um, because I built it. Uh -huh. Futuristic 60s retro. <laughs> retro futurism, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. And we've got uh, Kaltenstein approved Kaltenstein surround, surround sound. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, another television, another piano, this 50s style fireplace, um, and no privacy at all in the sleeping room. Um, yeah. another guard rope, but nothing else uh, up here, but down here. Yuri, for some reason, whatever, <sighs> yeah, uh, this is a secret, the best secret you now could imagine, apparently, um, yeah. and for some reason he wanted this giant painting looking at him while he's working. Uh, Okay. Also, he has, yeah, a, the, uh, <laughs> he has a, a four-segment Rubik's cube because uh, apparently he's not. Because you know. Yeah. To be fair, he's really good. He's he does know how to solve Rubik cubes. Um, yeah, he solves them if he thinks it's quite weird. Um, yeah. If, if you if you talk about some topic with him, you you hear some rattling in the background, and uh, you know he just solved the Rubik cube. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, he's a bot, and you know he's thinking. Um, <laughs> So the gears turning, yeah, and the uh, seat pickle in the uh, ding in the um, uh, here seat pickle under the screen oh. is supposed to be a rubber duck. What? For debugging. <laughs> Why? You can explain your code to the rubber duck, and when you explain your code to someone, you probably uh, you are more likely to find the error in your own code. Hey, this is some weird programming humor. I don't understand. Okay. No, that's not humor. That's actually a practical uh, way of doing something. What the fuck? Okay, uh, we've got a wine cellar now because he's a civilized man or something. <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, because this wasn't. My Berliner Luft is bad. 
he's got another room just for working, which is, I think, a library supposed to be. Um, but he's got another computer, which runs on... With Leaks Nooks. Leaks Nooks. Um, it's a warrior joke. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've got some lighting here. You can switch on and off, of course. And uh, let's get out of here. And then we have Core Gamer, also called Raw Gamer. Because he's a pipe cleaner. Yeah. Um, uh, his design style, well, is different. <laughs> he likes his chests. Okay, whatever. And Tonk. <laughs> well, I like... <laughs> This was the inspiration behind this. He already included this uh, this little tank model here in uh, MV3 in yeah. his private quarters. Yeah. And the Ocelot 2. The Ocelot 2, yeah. <laughs> Legally it's, distinct. Um, exactly. But it's supposed to be a Leopard 2, of course. Yeah. Um, so. As I always say, Kraus Macher Wegmann, Carlos. Yeah, we'd like to cooperate with you. And there's a giant barbecue, of course, so you can make tank sausages and whatever. Uh, another cellar with spirits. <laughs> we all like our alcohol and around here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have realized by now this team has problems. <laughs> and maybe uh, you also have realized that this team might have problems as you clicked on this video and have seen that we built something like this. And that is basically just one explanation for this. And it took two years and everything, yeah, whatever. The explanation why it took years is definitely alcohol. Um, okay. Now there's this bedroom here, um, and there is a television with a giant sofa, whatever. I thought the explanation is broccoli. Broccoli? What? Oh, okay, yeah. It's a German politics joke, great. Um, <laughs> uh, and there's another kitchen right here. And there's, of course, an aquarium because we all like our aquariums and... Uh, we all want them. And that's for the private quarters. We're really trying to make a headway now because we're like we're two hours in already and uh, And I don't care. Uh, okay. This is the swimming pool. Um And here the, the schedules continue. Uh dear. Aqua Fitness for 60 plus years old, uh school swimming and mixed sauna. Uh-huh. Well, Americans don't know that. I think this is actually more a German thing. Yeah, because in Germany um, you're not supposed to wear any clothes when you enter a sauna, um, unlike in America. Okay, um, yeah, there is changing rooms here, uh, also uh, mixed gendered. <laughs> well, we're very inclusive here, let's just say. Um, do not jump from the edge of the pool. Um, is that actually... I know, it seems like a very German thing to have that being illegal. Not illegal, but forbidden. Yeah. Um, yeah you've, got a, ran springen. <laughs> you've got a, a pool here, you've got some uh, some boards, and you've got a rubber duck to expand your coat or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> some lockers and the sauna. Um, we held yeah. some team meetings here um, in the yeah, thick smog. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's um, not a steep sauna, it's, uh, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like sitting inside a fireplace um, at 42 degrees. Um, I've been told that's fairly low for a sauna. Mm. Yeah, it is. Okay, a freedom unit that is um, like 100 Fahrenheit or uh, something, maybe? 42, 107.6. Uh so much for the swimming pool, and we'll loop back around um, some more living quarters here, and we'll just take the stairs down. There are some at the back yeah. as well. Mm. And now we're here um, in the lower civilian area. We've got uh, more public rooms here. Um, I think <laughs> we'll start here this time. Uh, uh, wait, 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 Hernet. Uh, oh, yes. Hygiene is important. important. Um, Absolutely, okay. Very good. Uh, this is the farming area. So we've got some automatic and semi-automatic farms here. First one is for pumpkins and melons, um, respectively. I don't remember which one is which, to be honest. Um, oh, another localization error, great. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is, but uh, these are the German food standards. So the chickens <laughs> might be uh, a bit um, cramped, but at least uh, these are not chlorine chickens. No, they're ducks, actually. Yeah. 
<laughs> there is a game in Germany Enter which guns. is played basically in, in kindergartens and schools and whatever. It's called Enter, 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 Enter Guns. Um, uh, isn't there the same version in uh, English? I don't remember. Basically, you go around in a circle and you tap the head of every participant and you say Enter, 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 Enter. Unless you say Guns, which means Goose. Um, then you have to run after him and if you catch him, you have to take his place and tap the head. So it's a really stupid game. I don't know what the point of the game is. You can't actually win the game. It's, it's <laughs> whatever. So uh, yeah, this is the joke behind it. This is an automatic chickens farm. The chickens um, lay eggs. They get dispensed onto this block. Um, it's a large enough space for the little chickens to not get fried. But once they grow up, they get uh, automatically cooked. Mm -hmm. And of course, then deliver to a storage system. We'll and take without a look chlorine? at it later. No chlorine, no. Yeah, it, I, I only recently learned this. In Germany, it is, well, it's not unique, but um, you don't have to refrigerate German eggs because they're not washed. If you buy eggs in America, you have to actually refrigerate them because they're washed. So, uh, there's that. Um, yeah, because somehow in America, you are not trusted to wash your hands after you, uh, <laughs> after you, uh, Open up up an egg. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, also, same for your milk and uh, for your milk products, uh, dairy products. So, cheese, uh, for example, American cheese is weird. Yeah, we well, just heard a chicken die there. So, uh, also feathers, of course, they also get stored. Okay, right now here we have uh, sugar canes, of course. Same principle as the bamboo farm downstairs. And, and here we have zwangsarbeiter. Yeah, this isn't supposed to be like this. So, um. Yeah, they should work. They, they, of course, they should work. Um, I, I think it is correct when you download the world. I think this is just an artifact of cloning the world, if I remember correctly. Um, these villagers should actually be farmers. The workstations yeah. here are blocked off, so they don't actually start composting their stuff. They just uh, keep mining it and fill up the inventory. Um, so once they turn into farmers um, with the... Yeah, they, it's bugged. You, I, I think you have to uh, place new ones. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and they're they just have funny names. Whatever. So, um, they're supposed to be farmers with their inventory saturated um, because all the seeds get dispensed back into the farm right in this block here. Um, so, they will keep breaking um, the weed and uh, the weed will and seeds will be sucked up by these hoppers um, the seeds will be dispensed uh, back in and the weed will get stored um, a similar principle is this farm for potatoes uh, uh, beetroots <laughs> and carrots um, we actually no one try these anyways <laughs> um, yes the same principle they should be farmers um, by these workstations here the original idea was um, to have them drop their food to this villager in the center, but that didn't work, so we just placed uh, hoppers below them. At this point, you should notice that we're not really good at building farms. It's just not our expertise of redstone at all. Um, and this redstone here shouldn't be here. Uh, I think... Uh, yeah, whatever. It always works, except when it doesn't. <laughs> Basically, so um, yeah. this is uh, this is our design for uh, for the food farms. They work pretty well, actually, if the villagers got the jobs they're supposed to have. Um, and we've got two levels of that. Yeah. Mm, okay. And if you go upstairs now, um, we can also take a look at the, the farm up here, and we can um, re reproduce animals. So basically, we have to take some wheat and carrots. Go here and uh, reproduce the, the cows, yeah. the sheep. It's a milk easel. It's a trap. Or a mogus. A mogus. A mogus are the white sheep. Uh, uh, and of course, yeah, we have another German ones, politics joke. Genius. Genius. Mm, is, is this really politics? Uh, whatever. It was a German food scandal or something. Um, well, I don't think they have changed much. Um, <laughs> Whatever, it's it's about German meat manufacturer. You can reproduce the the pigs here, and then. So uh, if if you want to be a vegetarian, just read the Wikipedia article about uh, Tonyas. Um... Not a good read. Anyway, if you reproduce them, um, <laughs> the little ones will fall through the the chains. Um, oh, get um, yeah, yeah. No, you reproduce them. They will be pushed here. 
the lava will flow over them and once they grow up they will be fried alive. Very good. Same principle as the chickens, but of course you have to manually reproduce them because they don't reproduce on their own. Watch animals. I feel like this should be another... Uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, another part to design. Mm. Yeah, our meat factory. <laughs> it's not a farm, this is a meat factory. <laughs> okay, yeah, um... Um, yeah, let's go here first. Uh, this is the stairwell. This is the Ritz. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, if you don't want to eat anymore, I don't care. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, this is the cantina, basically for um, yeah. for all occupants. You can mm. have. Uh, you know, will be a daily menu or something. Yeah. Thursday is yeah. Duna Tag. <laughs> Duna came up for euros. Um, whatever. Um, Duna is the best German food, and it's not even German. Um, yeah, well, okay. technically, it is uh, it is also German. Remember the classic Döner in the um, in the bread that uh, uh, was invented in Berlin. Um, so we've got very German options. First, we've got um, well, it's supposed to be a meat stew, but um, or beef stew. Gulasch suppe. Um, it's also an inserted joke about Gulsch um, from MV3 already. Um, with Spätzle, a German kind of pasta, and Salzkartoffeln, so potatoes, with salt. And uh, my preferred burger with bacon, onion, and fried eggs. Um, mine apparently hates yeah. that. Yeah, because... Why do you, don't you... Cheese! Why? Why no cheese? I don't like cheese. Yeah, you're weird. <laughs> I know I'm weird. Okay, uh, we've got a, a big galley here with... Um, do not, uh, well, came up, whatever. Der Gerät. <laughs> Google it, yeah. Google it, it's a very I'm, interesting yeah, story. I would call it do not as long as uh, the as long Britons uh, try to write it with an O and not an Ö. Yeah, that's another story all to itself. Well, anyway, uh, we've got some pork uh, ready for the slaughter, or already slaughtered, whatever. Um, some bookshelves, and uh, it's, it's a kitchen, whatever. Uh, and we open this door and go through this corridor here to the cold storage. Um, this is also another sorting system um, which basically handles all the output from the automatic farms we have. We got an attracting bin, it's minus 12 degrees here. I think that's a bit more realistic for cold storage. Um, Döner Spieße for Döner Tag. <laughs> Whatever you call them. Yeah. On a Thursday, it kind of sounds similar to the day you eat Döner at in German. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called Do Not Talk. It's also fairly self-explanatory. The um, the noise you can hear is the um, the yields that can't be placed into the into the sorting system are automatically put in the scrap. And if that overflows, it overflows into some lava um, because the farm is ridiculously productive. Uh, you really need a bunch of people to especially when your server uh, when your server runs uh, 24/7 and you have yeah. the water force loaded. Okay, so the gym. <laughs> yeah. and booty work workout for um, male, female, diverse, 40 plus, and ballet courses for physically disabled guys. Uh, yeah, great jokes here. Um, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the gym. We've got this typical ballet um, bar with a mirror. I don't really know what it's for, but uh, I think for the correct form to look at yourself or whatever. Yeah. So a bunch of kids will stand here and do some ballet uh, stuff. Whatever. I don't. I don't do ballet. Yeah, uh, something medieval. <laughs> a treadmill. No, it's not a treadmill. What? What, what do you no. call this? What is it? A peloton. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. This. Uh, for boxing. And um. Yeah. This is a treadmill. Okay. It actually works. Well, it is known as a treadmill, but you can just stand on it and do nothing. I like this kind yeah, of exercise. Yeah, this is why we call it Stehbänder instead of Laufbänder. <laughs> so it's not a running band, it's a standing band. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever, it's a yeah, gym. It's also just decorative. Yeah, and also you you could call it this way that we call it. Uh, we always call it that. You could also call it a standing joke instead of a running joke. Okay, so this is the sick bay. Um, also schedule three-day internship on Monday. Intensive care on Wednesday and public viewing on Thursday. Yeah, um, and um, 
There's something way to... Yeah, public viewing, if you know that, um, if public viewing is um, advertised in German, it's actually uh, referring to watching a football game. Um, in the public with... Yeah. People. <laughs> not uh, not yeah. dead bodies. Um, yeah, but to be fair, uh, the last, uh, last World Championship uh, was basically the same public viewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, we got we a somehow, sick bay here. Uh, we it's... somehow forgot how to play football since 2014. Uh, yeah. But we, uh, we learned it again, I think. We, we Already 10 years ago. Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, okay, we've got an office here for the doctor, I guess. Uh, when we built this, um, I was thinking of including like a mirror here. So this is supposed to be a mirror, but of course, they don't look exactly the same, so... Uh, it's a window yeah. where you can watch the people getting said, Oh, we've got cancer, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sack <laughs> More offices, it doesn't really matter. Mm. And uh, the public library. Yeah. As we say in German, es spannen sich unerträgliche Schmerzen an. Hat up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Anyway, the public library with some sitting. Um, furniture yeah. and uh, the game room. I yeah. can... As you can see from the interior, it's sponsored by a 60s uh, East German workshop or something like this. No one would like it. This looks like leather, but it's plastic in reality. <laughs> and horrible. It's called the lounge, but um, Texas yeah. is probably sponsored by VEB Stoff Imitate Chemnitz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> East Germany is a great um, place. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, uh, and this is the final arguable. meeting room, um, the the bar. Um, I started by um, wanting an Irish pub in the in the war gear. Oh, um, huh? We didn't fix the signs. They swapped around. Oh, no, ah, no. It's not right. Um, yeah, the yeah. German name is dem Vater sein Platz, so uh, your daddy's place, and. <laughs> <laughs> in the worst German uh, you can actually put on a sign. And of course we've got Guinness here and uh, the German classic Krombacher, um, the Formula 1 Mit sponsor. It's Krombacher gebaut. Gebaut. Ja, um, gebaut. <laughs> gebraut. Yeah. We know, yeah, du hast gebaut gesagt. Uh, we ja, know our beer in Germany. Um, uh, yeah, with Biathlon im Ersten and Sky Sports F1 Live. Yes, we also kind of uh, forgot how to play Biathlon. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know, do you have those signs everywhere? This is basically no. a German uh, tradition. For Führerrobe, keine Haftung. No liability for wardrobe. Yeah, basically, at every wardrobe there's a sign Führerrobe, keine Haftung. So, yeah. Uh, the largest beer selection in a radius of 12 servers. Saturday is a pub quiz, Thursday is battle shots. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got a bunch of memes that are even harder to translate, um, and we've got a bunch of beers, of course. Um, so we've got Hombacher, Guinness, König Pilsner, Paulana, Bex, Bitburger, and a bunch of more uh, on the menu yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Wednesday, my dudes. You dads. You dads. You dads. Einigen. We're inclusive. Is it actually called do deaths in English? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, oh, I... <laughs> here once was a TV, it disappeared. Yeah, where did it go? I don't actually know. Uh, where did it come from? Where did it go? <laughs> Got nice TV, okay. Yeah, Popular um, One is presented by Germany once. Yeah, uh, um, back when they were still on private television. Yeah, um, now you have to pay for Sky Sports to watch it. It's not on television. It's shit. And expensive. And you're wondering why we're not getting done. Yeah, this room is part of the explanation. Yeah. Some jokes about beer advertisement nobody's gonna get. Wait, uh, you, could, you, could just, uh, you could just play the sound in the video and look at a copyright strike. The world's first beer you have to drink with knife and fork. Of course, referring to Guinness. Guinness. Uh, Potato is not available at the moment. Also Guinness. And Dutch National Anthem intensifies for uh, Heineken Pilsner, because Nein. there is... <coughs> no, Heineken. Oh, oh. If... oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically, yeah, they often have these sentences on their F1-related uh, advertisements. 
And yeah, I think Max Verstappen, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, here could, could, what? Here could, could be your beer, Edward. Okay, krasses Schild. Yeah, there's someone tried to move the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> move the words around and uh, forgot halfway through. <laughs> My goodness, my Guinness, uh, Lecker Bierchen, German joke about beer. Yeah, um, um, and we have um, we have on tap Krombacher, Guinness, Bitburger, Becks, König Pilsner und Paulaner. And we have bottled Astra Rakete, Heineken, Gaffelköl, Stiebels, Alt, Königshof, Jever, Warsteiner, Feltins, Oettinger, Corona Extra, Erdinger, Karlsberg, Hasseröder, Augustiner, Tiski, Radeberger, Pilsner, Urquell and Rothaus. All of the beers, of course. Uh, we also have some wine. From Aldi. <laughs> um, then, we've, because Jojo wanted some wine on the menu, because he has a wine yeah. cellar and he's a civilized man and he drinks wine from Aldi. Uh, <laughs> uh, non alcoholic. Uh, we've got Paulana Spezi, the best drink in the world. Um, Fritz Cola, German brand of Coke. Uh, liquors on demand. Actually, in Germany, Coke is actually made with cane sugar. Um, or mushrooms if you drink it without uh, without sugar, which is the preferable way to do it. Um, nope. On demand, uh, Radler, Alster, Krefelder, Gonster, so some mixed um, drinks. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Radler and Alster. It's basically translation. It's beer with lemonade. I don't know. Uh, yeah, half beer, half lemonade. I don't actually know if the, there's a, it's an English equivalent by, to that. By women, so uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, um, Krefelder, in Arab, uh, depends where you are, in Krefeld it's called Krefelder, in uh, other places it's called Schweinebier. Um, <laughs> what? It's beer with coke. Ah, okay. <laughs> And uh, Gonstar, you can uh, show the meme. <laughs> It looks so disgusting. Yeah. And got some, uh, some snacks is. and uh, caviar, which is... Uh, Allegedly, um, in the 19th century, you could get caviar for free in bars in New York because they had so much of it and there was no way to refrigerate it, so they had to get rid of it somehow. Um, yeah, okay. Also, you can get a Bockwurst. <laughs> Very German thing. Um, it's... okay, we got that. Uh, yeah, there's a bar, of course. There's a kitchen. Yeah. And, there's uh, the Schütter. <laughs> the lavatory, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gents, let's go on the right one this time. Very good. Ah, also those um, those hoppers are uh, connected to the uh, recycling system. Yeah, so you can throw your trash. Oh, what was that? Huge lag. Lagged. <laughs> It felt like uh, something. Exploded. I actually heard you lagging in Discord, so probably <laughs> your PC just exploded. Okay, whatever. Oh, now we're in the ladies' room. Sorry. Um. Anyway, so much for the bar, and I think this is the last room on the civilian area. So um, we'll Maybe. loop around here. Yeah, this is the Ritz, okay. Um, and we'll go back out. Mm, and I think we can take one more look around the outside to check around... Oh no, we can... I forgot about this. Yeah, we've got another window into the... Into the wiring. Um, so this one still looks a bit more civilized, but if you... Um, Look a bit, a uh, bit more down here, where the ring actually is. You, we had to fit everything through here. This was a major, was yeah. literal bottleneck. Yeah. <laughs> the stuff here was horrible enough because you see, this is uh, the floor here is uh, the bottom of uh, the upper part, and uh, yeah, every cable that needs to uh, go uh, go through here is just here because it can't be higher because there's the cannon, the main cannon. It can't be lower because there's this ginormous room <laughs> and someone actually wanted to make the roof in this room even higher. The ceiling just, yeah, the ceiling has like five blocks to the cannon, something like this. Yeah, and uh, someone wanted to make it even higher. It wouldn't have worked. <laughs> no, yeah, but, absolutely but I'm, not. I'm happy how it turned out this way. Um, so I think we're done with the interior now. I'm just gonna go outside and um, well, you can switch on all the all the blinky stuff, I think. So mine is now gonna switch off and on the, the headlights. Okay, one off. headlight and two headlights, and you can turn them back on again. Same on the rear. Yep, very nice. 
Um, by the way, if you're wondering, there is some... How many glowstones? One or zero? I don't know. I think there are zero glowstones in the war here. Um, Maybe. I you could so. just count. Because every fear had exactly one and it was displayed in the museum. And I think this one is not at all. And it has uh, a few sea lanterns. Two of them are right here. Um, and two more are in the elevators each. Um, these are the convoy lights. So we put the indicators here. Now oh, my turn the headlights uh, out again. Off again. And back on. And uh, these are the convoy lights to stay in formation, I think. And now we set the indicators. Um, yeah. So much for a road legal vehicle. You can also turn on the beacons. Also, please yeah, notice um, that the antennas are marked with red on them, so no plane collides with them. <laughs> yeah, there they um, are. Okay, so please uh, activate the fireworks. Fireworks. Yep, there they are. Oh. It's the same firework we've been recycling for the past five years. Yeah. Um, well, it looks great. I don't know. Yeah, so you can. I don't know, do it as a victory celebration or something, whatever. You've got fireworks or to signal somebody else, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I think that is it. Yeah. Did we forget something. I don't think so. And uh, um, the video has been long enough, so I think we're just going to do this. you lock the main cannon again? Uh, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, let's remove the walkie from existence. Alright, um, so first let's uh, make it day again. The way you do this is, oh, we can take the chamber head off because we're outside of the hygiene area now. Um, so the way this works is uh, you need two, although all of the two commando cards, and you need to throw them into the hopper. The key cards have been scanned and accepted, otherwise they will be thrown out. Yeah, you could grab them here with that button. Okay. And you have to. Basically, it's pretty simple, but you need two, uh, two people. Just press the triggers at the same time. Yeah, um, Three, I two, think we'll... one, go. It's, you don't have to hit the exact same tick, but um, if a few ticks uh, time to do it, but it really is only possible I think with for two people. A, for a redstone tick, I think. Okay. And so now the, we could um, uh, send a bot signal. We could, but, but we can also we block it um, with these. You Three, also two, one, go. Press them at the same time, and then the board signal is blocked. If so we take a yes. look now, um, we can see the self-destruct alert is triggered and the bar is running down. So yeah, we, um, could, we could also activate a silent alarm beforehand. So, so uh, basically, nothing would happen apart from uh, the. Uh, from the stuff here in the bridge. Now I ejected the key cards. I can give you respect. And yeah, those people in the upper decks will now. have, uh, yeah, the people in the upper decks would have a really unpleasant surprise. What we also can do is activate the, um, sorry, the beginning evacuation to hear that alarm. As you can hear, all the chimes went off. All the doors yeah. opened and the second alarm has been triggered. And I think these alarms really have a sound of urgency, so... Yeah. And now you can see at the front all the uh, lamps blink at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Let's ignore seems... the last one because the last one is in another chunk and uh, they are technically on the same lay, but... Yeah, chunk loading in Minecraft and visual updates, not great. Well, we've reached the end of the countdown now, and you can hear the dispensers uh, firing. Of course, and the TNT alert getting slower. Yeah, TNT in dispensers is of course not allowed for cannons because it's just way too boring to build good dispenser cannons. But for these self-destruct sequences, they're really good because they're well, the only way to make it compact and not basically have a fuel air bomb <laughs> as your war gear. Um, okay, so this is gonna take quite a while. Um, so I think I'm just going to include a time lapse right here, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, um, the bridge exploded. The atrium exploded, um, all the cannon decks get basically obliterated. 
Um, the water is of course um, blocking the advance and uh, there is no real possibility to blow every last bit of armor up as well. But uh, yeah, it, it destroys it's all unusable. the relevant functions of the warrior. It is basically unusable afterwards. So um, oh, huh? The evacuation or the runs? Well, it's good. This is quality <laughs> tech. <laughs> yeah, there is some stuff still still left, but. Um, Basically, the warrior is completely unusable to anyone who finds it now, and uh, that's basically the point of the self-destruct sequence. Um, also, all the people get killed because all the quarters get obliterated, um, but the animals are still alive because we're um, Peter Definitely. likes us. Okay, whatever. I think that's it, really. Um, we don't want to drag up the video too long. We already did it two and a half hours. Uh, let's see how how much I'll cut out of that. If you want to download the war gear, link in the description. Um, do it on Planet Minecraft, leave a diamond there, whatever. Um, write a comment. Um, if you want to know more about war gears, we linked Halem's video. If you want to build war gears that are actually uh, not that big, but uh, actually built to fight against each other, those have far less technical uh, stuff, far less of those goodies, more just pure cannons. Um, you can join on myplayplanet.net if you uh, are lucky. They got their update finally done. Um, <laughs> I think we uh, we will uh, write in the description because after the update, server will have uh, will have also uh, English language support. And right now, you have to struggle through a bit of German to uh, build a warrior. So if you want to build uh, one yourself, uh, please do myplayplanet.net. You can also fight there with uh, public warriors. If you think we should do English videos more often, just write something in the comments. If you have questions, comments, whatever, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're the most motivated English speakers like of thing. all time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope yeah. you like this thing. I hope you like our horrible humor. Um, until next time. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.